All right, prep students, I hope you're all doing well this week. Uh, so we're in week six of our prep uh, classes here, or our online, online classes. Uh, this week, we're going to continue with uh, our chromatic uh, theme um, in chromatic exercise number two. Uh, this is basically a continuation of last week's exercise. Uh, this version just simply asks uh, for each of you to... Uh, to play the chromatic scale, uh, but this time instead of just going in sequence, we're going to go ahead and repeat uh, two notes at a time. So um, basically, if you're looking at your C chromatic scale, you're going to play in quarter notes, C to C sharp, C to C sharp, and then in the next measure, you'll go C sharp to D, C sharp to D, and basically this is just uh, helping to get you more familiar with all the notes on your instrument. Uh, there are a few um, notes as you go along uh, this particular chromatic scale that you'll have a bit of difficulty depending on your uh, instrument. Uh, if you're a trombone player, going from B flat to B natural, which is first position all the way to seventh position, could be a bit tricky. Or if you're talking about clar clarinet players who are going over the break, again, it's a bit of a difficulty in this. So this exercise breaks it down just a little bit more so that you spend some more time, especially on those notes that you're having a hard time trans transitioning between. Okay, uh, so either way, uh, I went ahead and also created uh, four different scales on the chromatics. Remember, chromatics is every note in between, so it doesn't really matter where you start on your instrument, uh, but I did write out a few just to kind of give you a starting point. Um, um, some of them um, are meant to kind of help you start at different points on your horn. Uh, so if you're a clarinet player, maybe you want to start um, on your low G and then make your way up to, to the higher G. Uh, for a trombone player, maybe you want to work on getting higher notes. So maybe you do the F chromatic, which will start you uh, around mid, uh, middle F and then take you up again. Uh, by doing it chromatically, it helps slowly get you up higher and higher. Uh, I would also recommend uh, working on the lower end if you're a trombone player, but this goes for everybody. In essence, it's a good way to start at different points um, uh, on your instrument so that you get a chance to kind of work through all the different notes in a different order. Okay, uh, as always, there's a recording of each of those uh, scales uh, provided as well. Uh, when you do uh, begin working on any of the scales, again, you choose, uh, start off by making sure that you know all the proper fingerings, positions, all that good stuff, uh, and write in all the notes if and positions if needed. Uh, play through each of the uh, each of the pieces and make sure you identify any notes or set of notes that you're having trouble with. Again, as I said earlier, you wanna make sure that uh, you work on the things that are giving you the most trouble. Uh, again, that's where all the learning is being done. If you're practicing the things that you already know, uh, it, that's great and it's good for you to be continuing to uh, blow some air through the horn or working those fingers on your strings but we want to work a little bit on things that are, are, are not quite under our fingers yet that's what's going to help us uh, move forward okay um, for my wind players, uh, make sure again, as always, give you know, give each note full values. Try to take a deep breath and try to play as much as of that on one breath as possible. Uh, remember, when you start getting to a point where you can no longer support the note properly, uh, you know, take a breath. You don't want to get to a point where the notes are not sounding pretty. Uh, for my percussionist, uh, bell players. Uh, once you get comfortable playing uh, the exercises on quarter notes, uh, try maybe moving them, uh, excuse me, turning them into eighth notes so that you can play doubles. Uh, again, uh, on, if we're using uh, the C chromatic scale as an example, uh, right now, you the way it's written, you would play C, D, excuse me, C, C sharp, C, C sharp, D, excuse me, C sharp, D, C sharp, D. We want to change that into eighth notes so that we work on doubles. So, C, C, C sharp, C sharp, C, C, C sharp, C sharp, C sharp, C sharp, D, D, C sharp, C sharp, D, D, et cetera, et cetera. And speed it up as you get more comfortable and really work on those doubles. You want to make sure that you're uh, keeping the stick height the same uh, and you're using more wrist uh, than arm, okay? We want to make sure you give more dexterity in those wrists. Uh, string players, uh, again, as always, make sure that you focus on half position as well as making sure you keep those fingers spread out. Uh, you want to get to the point where you're able to play chromatically across the uh, the strings by simply just dropping your fingers down um, on those different frets uh, without having to look. Okay, uh, try to stay in um, you know first position. Bass players, you can be, go between uh, half position and first position. Position, but again, focus on keeping those fingers uh, open and again going down slowly so that you really get a feel for where uh, those fingers should be as you uh, play along. And again, make sure they're right up against that fret. 
piano players, you want to make sure that you're using, again, proper fingering as you play along. Uh, practice each each of them separately uh, when you bring them together. Uh, sorry. Uh, make sure that you're practicing those fingerings. Uh, start off with one hand each uh, and then bring them together slowly to make sure that uh, you can play them together. Uh, be careful about the points where the hands are doing slightly different things from the other hand. Uh, that's when we got to get uh, a little mixed up. So again, take it slowly, get used to it. Uh, and then, you know, eventually uh, bring up the tempo as you feel more comfortable. I would advise for piano players, especially is to move around the octave. Um, since you have such a, you know, a wide range, you know, 88 keys uh, on, at least on a full size piano, uh, you have various octaves that you can play at, play that uh play on the piano so maybe sort of on a lower a maybe a slightly higher a you know and try to keep your the trunk of your body in the same position don't kind of move over you don't want you want to be able to kind of just bring your entire arms around without really moving the trunk okay uh, so for the song of the week we have uh miles davis's uh, all blues is from the kind of blue album, which again is, is considered one of the uh, epic of all uh, jazz albums. So, uh, you know, if yet besides uh, kind of blue, there's a lot of great tunes you should be listening to. So uh, if you don't know where to start when it comes to some listening outside of this, kind of blue would be a great album to start with. Okay, um, as always, listen to the recording as much as possible kind of put it on repeat uh play it while you're taking a shower play it while you know you're out and doing some laundry or cleaning your room whatever it may be just go ahead and just keep listening on to it get that melody in your head get those uh, parts in your head as well um you know start again by learning the notes of the melody in a slow order uh get used to them and then slowly start adding in the uh the rhythm uh if you're if you need to put in fingering or um, positions or whatever it may be, or the actual name of the notes uh, onto your sheet of music, write it in. Don't be afraid again. Uh, always do the pencil. So that way, if you make a mistake, you can erase it. Uh, the melody in this tune is long and fluid and you want it to sound as pretty as possible. Uh, make sure that you're giving all the notes their full value uh, and try to mimic the recording as much as possible. Again, that only comes with you, uh, you know, listening as much as possible. Uh, bass player and piano uh, and drummers as well. Um, once you got the notes down, once you can play the rhythms, you really need to work on making sure that you get the style of this tune down, uh, specifically when it comes to swinging uh, the eighth notes. Uh, this is a hard, what we call a hard swing uh, on the eighth notes. Uh, so you should almost have a uh, an eighth note subdivision in your head. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, 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 one, two, three. That's what it should, even though the tempo is up. You should hear That's called a subdivision. And you want to kind of have that in your head as you're playing these notes so that it gives you a swing feel. Excuse me. You want to kind of have a swing feel. And and again, a lot of that comes from being able to listen to uh, the recording and trying to get that style down. It's very hard to write that out. Uh, so it's always implied when you have your, your music there. So again, spend a little time on that, making sure you really get that swing down. All right, last thing uh, is the video of the week. Um, I came across this just a few days ago and I thought it was kind of interesting. Uh, basically, it's a demonstration of a variety of different, uh, less common instruments. So even though we all know clarinets, flutes, trumpets, uh, a lot of them are uh, a single version of that particular family. There is a, uh, a soprano piccolo, a piccolo, uh, a piccolo, which is, in essence, a soprano flute, okay? Uh, you have uh, bass clarinets, you have alto clarinets, you have uh, the most common, which is the one that most of you are playing, uh, is a soprano clarinet. Uh, you have, uh, you know, a soprano trumpet, you also have bass trumpets, you have, you know, bass trombones, you have all these variety of different um, instruments out there that are less common, but are, uh, you know, are around. So this video kind of walks you through a variety of those particular instruments. And I think it's pretty cool to hear uh, and see these instruments um, being played. Uh, there's a, I believe a contra uh, bass saxophone, and it's just bigger than a tuba. And it's the coolest thing ever. So I uh, hope you enjoy that. As always, make sure you're signing up for lessons. Uh, if you're not sure about that, have your parents email me and I'll be happy to help them set that all up. Thank you so much and uh, have a great week. Bye-bye.